channel. In this video, I'll be discussing about the three identities. However, before you watch any further, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any of my videos. And if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to hit like button and share this link to your friends. In my previous videos, I've shown you everything about the trick ratios, the sine, cosine, and tangent. And we all know that they are very, very useful. However, what if you're given a question, let's say, to find out the sine of, let's say, for example, 75. And you're asked to do this without any calculator. At first, you might think that this is impossible, because the only way to figure out trick ratios without calculator is if you're dealing with special angles, and they are the 30, 45, 60, and 90. And we all know that 75 is one of them. So, how we do that? Well then, we're going to need to use the trick identities. So, what is the trick identities? Basically, trick identities is an elaboration of a variable that forms an equality, basically an equation. And there are lots of different trick identities, such as the half angle identities, double angle identities, reciprocal identities, and much more. However, in this video, I'm just going to discuss about the sum and difference identities. So, there are six types of sum and difference identities. The first one is sine of A plus B, and then sine of A minus B. And so far, it makes sense that it's called the sum and difference identities, because it is the trick ratios that involves sum of two different angles and the difference between them. So then, we can continue this with cosine, and then tangent a plus b and a minus b so then so what are these basically i've told you that the trick identities is an elaboration of a variable so then it's going to basically elaborate these trick ratios that from inequality so it will make an equation and it's going to be equal to so then, what we form, we're going to elaborate it. And some mathematicians have found out that it can be elaborated into sine of A times cosine of B plus by cosine of A times sine of B. And here, you just need to memorize this first step because the second part of the equation Basically, this one is just a switchover between the A and the B. Because in here, the sign is A, but in here, the sign is B. And basically, the same thing for cosine. So you only need to remember this part of the equation. So then, what about for sine of A minus B? Basically, it's going to be the exact same equation as sine of A plus B. However, they change the positive into a negative. Because that makes sense. We switch the same thing in here, positive to negative, so it must be doing the same thing. So it's going to be everything on the top, sine of A times cosine of B, and then you put in minus, then cosine of A times sine of B. So then, what about cosine? Well then, for the cosine, it's basically our sine of A plus B. However, we switch two terms. We switch the sine of A with the cosine of A. So then, the cosine of A will be at the left, and the sine of A will be at the right. That's an easy way to memorize it. So then, we switch it, so we get the cosine of A becoming at the left, cosine of A, and then we put in our cosine of B. Then, but for the plus, we change it to, into a negative. So remember, for sine, the plus connects with the plus, but for cosine, the plus connects with the negative. So then, we put this one, which is sine of A, that has been switched into the right part, times by sine of B. And then, the same thing for cosine of A minus B. We just take all these equations 
and change the minus into plus. So then we put everything on the top, cosine of A times cosine of B. Then we put in plus, then sine of A times sine of B. And then, what about for tangent of A plus B? Well, we can always recall that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. So we can put that tangent of A plus B is equal to sine of A plus B divided by cosine of A plus B. And then you can put in the equations above these two and find the answer. However, if you want to make it shorter, you can always figure out using variables and algebra that this would be equal to tangent of A because this time we're only going to use tangents. So tangent of A plus by tangent of B divide by 1 minus tangent of A times by tangent of B. And this is the one that's quite confusing to figure out because it involves a fraction. So you have to memorize the numerator and the denominator. And if you're asking, why does it involve fraction, not like the ones above it? Well, because this fraction is basically the elaboration of this sine of a plus b over cosine of a plus b. And after algebra, after algebra, we can always know that fractions will remain a fraction, no matter what math we put into. So then, the same thing. For tangent of a minus b, we just switch the positive into negative and the negative into positive. So that's an easy way to remember it. It's going to be tangent of a, then you put in our negative, so it's going to be minus by tangent of b, divide by 1, and then you put in our plus, tangent of a times tangent of b. So in here, you don't need to change the times into becoming a divide. So there we go. We figure out our sum and derivative identities. All of these, sine of a plus b, a minus b, then continue for cosine and tangent. And then, we can always use this equation to solve for different and huge angles that does not comply with other identities, like sine of 75. But that will be done for my next video, because in that video, I'm going to show you how to use sum and different identities to solve for big and relatively small angles. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this link to your friends. And if you want more videos, don't forget to check my YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching!